We're really delighted to be here to present this wonderful opportunity. The Senior Curator of European Paintings and I have been wanting to do this treatment for a very long time. We're going to be doing a full restoration of two of the icons of the MFA, the Rembrandt oval portraits of the woman with the gold chain and the man with the black hat. It always surprises people that it takes us a long time sometimes to get to the most important paintings in the collection because they are always on view. And they look good, but sometimes we know they could look better. And we really have wanted to get to this for some time. And we're so happy that the event of a very generous grant from TEFAF has been the catalyst to allow us to actually finally make this treatment a priority. I think this is one of the more engaging portraits by Rembrandt because of her dimples. I have to say I have a soft spot for her dimples. He uses an amazing array of whites and grays and browns to describe the various layers of her lace and various thicknesses of paint to describe the relative transparency and translucency. He has turned more away from the light so that the side of his face is in shadow. And that shadow has been painted very thinly. And over the years, the in paint has darkened with time. Is this the end of her hair, or does her hair seem to continue here and it was been, it's been painted over? Yeah. And will, will your cleaning reveal what that, I've never seen that in the galleries. And I think her, her hair does end here, but I think there's an adjustment, no question, and there's some restoration in there that's making it a little confusing. So originally, and even here, you can see that it once extended over the lace. Mm -hmm. so, so it looks like he painted that out, do you think? Uh, I think so, although it gets complicated because I think there's later paint as well, but I think it's an original adjustment. And so the way you read it now is that this is the end of her hair. I think, right? that, I think that's, that's how right. I've always read it, because that's kind of even to that side. I think that's right, um, and I think what's going on here is confusing, and, and some of the older restoration, that, which is dark and makes it even more so, it makes this more of a form, but it does look like there's a change there. Yeah, yeah. so that's cool. Kind of cool. I never saw that. Um, and then there's also another, you can see another area of that old restoration up there as well. I think it's just there's a, an area that's been sort of overpainted a little bit clumsily that should go away. I think it's thin. And is there any way to, to kind of rescue the impasto? I, the impasto is definitely still there and what, the reason why it's so um, discreet, you don't really get a strong sense of it right now, is because um, there's so much varnish on top. N not just an, an old PVA, an old synthetic varnish, which is thick and really, really sort of deadly to the surface, but a buildup of old natural resins underneath. Huh. So those are really filling in the impasto. Oh. So when those go away, I think, yeah, I think pop. you'll get much more of a sense. And I think that's true in the, in the lace and in the chain as well. I think you'll actually see and, see and feel much more. Yeah. Uh, which is going to be really wonderful. I think we're going to want to be sensitive to the lighting of the paintings too, somehow to bring out. Once you, you know, restore all of this detail, we want to make sure we don't lose it again. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th I think if there's something that we can do that just brings out the topography, which is so extraordinary. Right. Because I think when people get close and look, they can't believe the way the paint is handled. Um, well, he's sculpting in paint. I mean, that's that was one of the ways that he was his his technique was described, right? With yeah. His use of impasto. Um, and you really, see, and also the way, I mean, you're very aware of it, but the way he does the same with the lace, and particularly this upper lace, that's you get the sense of that stiffness. That's, right. that's fantastic. It is fantastic. I mean, one of the things I'm sort of interested in is to try and get a better sense of what might be missing, and also um, the the amount of sort of old. Uh, Varnish that There's clogged. a lot of gunk right it, in here, right? It's clogged. It's really clogged up. So I think that it might actually function much better once we are able to remove that and you can actually get a sense um, of how the surface and the reflections were supposed to work. And then, of course, there's the, the old 
restoration in his face, which really does not do him justice. It's also amazing to look at the amount of color in his face. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all these different coloristic accents in the flesh tones that you don't see in her. It's really true. Different kinds of color, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, the, very much so. And how much of that might be different handling and how much of that is just the, t the tonal difference between the man and the woman is, can be a little hard, tricky right. to figure out. I'm also hoping we get a much better sense of things like the details, like for example, you know, you really his his you can hardly see his hair, right? But he really does have curls um, on both sides of his face that right now don't really separate from the hat. But right. I think once once it's cleaned, you'll actually have a sense of his hair curling in front of the hat. I'm also curious about his shadow mm -hmm. because it, it, that doesn't really seem to give him a lot of three dimensionality. It's you don't true. have this really strong feeling, right, of this figure casting a shadow on a a plane further back. And again, that's one of the issues with the, the current state of the, the varnishes on top. They're, they're just completely flattening the whole surface. Now, mm -hmm. that, you still may feel that way after it's clean, right. but I, I think again, investigating that and getting much better saturation of the surface may allow him to stand out in front of the shadow and the backdrop um, and give it much more depth. But uh, we'll, we'll see. And do you think there's going to be any more detail coming out in the uh, in his? I, I, it's, you can't see anything really. It's. I think there will be a little. Um, in comparison to her, there's much less information. But again, starting to remove the overpaint, I think we'll start to get a better sense. Removing the overpaint and then getting better saturation on the blacks, I think you may get a better sense of at least a shoulder and an, and an arm um, about some idea of how the drapery falls. Um, I don't necessarily expect a huge amount. but And this wood grain, is that that it's been very thinly painted or that that is an abrasion? It's or abrasion everywhere, actually? It's, you see a lot. I think it's both. I think that the, the, the black paint is very thin and, and the wood grain has been allowed to show through and probably shows through more because of just aging in the paint. But things like that, I think, are absolutely abrasions mm -hmm. and, and shouldn't be. And it does seem like there's an area of restoration in here that's um, particularly prominent. So I can't again, wait to see you work your magic. What an amazing opportunity! Yeah. An amazing opportunity. No, it's going to be. It's going to be. A We've lot been of waiting fun. for this for a long time. Yes, we have. <laughs>